Bentonville Tigers on fire in week zero and now with two straight losses. What in the world is going on there? Rogers Mounties are heading to Southside in the battle of unbeaten teams. All this and more on this week's Prep Rally. You're watching the Prep Rally Podcast. Welcome to the Prep Rally Podcast, sponsored by West Termite Pest and Lawn. I'm Graham Thomas with the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette, and I'm joined in studio with Rick Fires from the NWA Democrat Gazette and Leland Barclay in the River Valley. All right, guys, let's get right into it here. Um, 7A West Conference play starts this week, and uh, after last week's light schedule, I think everybody is more than happy to to be moving into conference play with the big schools in, in this part of the state. Um, Rick, you know, you and I were at Bentonville last week, saw the Tigers lose again in Bentonville. Um, you know, it's uh, conference play is starting, and, you know, we're all playing for keeps now. Uh, yeah, uh, to start a conference play, I, I play, I guess we call it the second season and then the third season, the uh, postseason and everything. Um, I'm just – I'm walking on sunshine today. I love conference play. You know, there's some teams, out-of-state teams. I don't know anything about Mustang, uh, Oklahoma, except that they beat Arbor and some of these other schools. But these teams, these rivalries in the, in, in the 7A West, the 7A Central, uh, we know who these teams are. We know their history. We know the coaches, uh, a lot of the players. So it's it's just like another start. Everybody's starting zero zero. I don't care if you're zero and three in non-conference. So I'm just jacked up. I, I love some of these games we got on the docket uh, on Friday night. And yeah, Leland, you know, I know you're excited about just the start of conference play. Just it just means more. <laughs> well, I think you know, like I said, I think we talked about it last week. Middle of the summer. I could see, I mean, we knew Southside was going to be good, obviously. We, I mean, we put them on the cover of the River Valley uh, football preview. Uh, and we knew Rogers was going to be good. And we thought, you know, both of these teams might be 3-0 and going into the conference. And sure enough, they are. And that's, uh, that's the first of many uh, of what will be big games in the 7A West. You know, I, it still looks like at this point, yeah, I know Bentonville's 1-2. and two, But Bentonville and Fayetteville, I think, are the teams to beat. Uh, but that's not to say that Rogers or Southside, and I tell you, Harbor put up a great fight last week. Um, you know, scored 47 points and had a lead before they gave up the uh, the field goal. They scored late, got an onside kick, scored and took the lead. So I don't think we can count out Harbor uh, just yet either. So it's 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 a fun time of the year, and it's uh, seven weeks. All right. Well. Before- before we get into those matchups this week, I know we want to get into them. Let's just get a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about what happened last week. So, as I said, you know, Rick and I were at Bentonville to see uh, the Tigers lose on a last-second field goal to a really good Kansas City Rockhurst team. Um, man, it, you know, just a tough loss for Bentonville. It's two in a row now. And, um, you know, they're not hitting the panic button over there, but obviously they feel like, you know, they – uh, they they felt like they could have won both those last two games to Conway and to Kansas City Rockhurst. So, you know, they're licking their wounds a little bit, Rick. Well, it's very uncharacteristic. Uncharacteristic. Four interceptions, and then uh, Rockhurst ground game just kind of controlled it, and they ate it up, and, and Bentville couldn't get a stop. And, you know, it's not just us. Jody Grant said that we're a better football team than we've been showing. He said, we owe our fan base, our student section, all supporters mm-hmm. better than we've been giving them. So, you know, you, you'd be foolish to give up on Bentonville, but, man, uh, uh, they got something to prove here in the next few weeks. Yep. You know, Leland uh, kind of already mentioned it, Springdale Harbor with a really nice performance against Mustang, Oklahoma. You know, the Wildcats are 0-3. They lost 49-47. to um, I know that you know, Coach Eckley and, and, and Harbor are not going to take any consolation over a, a really good played football game. They they feel like they should have won it. They're up twenty one to nothing and um you know Mustang got the ground game going, scored you know, got back in it, and then it was a fight and uh Mustang won on a on another last second field goal basically. Um then you know Shiloh Christian goes down over at Lincoln Christian. Um <laughs> it, it was a tough week for our teams up here in northwest yes. Arkansas. Uh, Green Forest did come up with a with its second straight victory. I was happy to see that one. Yes. Um, 
you know, down the River Valley, Leland. Uh, so Greenwood, they they rolled to a four to a four and zero start by uh, beating Solemn Springs. There there were some moments there though, then some some fights that you know kind of maybe they didn't expect from Solom, but uh, you know, good job by Solemn Springs for having a good game plan against Greenwood. Yeah, I mean, Solomon Springs had 240 yards of offense, which is the most that uh, the Greenwood's given up. 183 of that on the ground. Uh, um, Derwin, I don't remember his first name, Derwin, 30 carries for 111 yards. Yeah. And they got a uh, pick six. So um, I think that bodes well for Solomon Springs, uh, you know, because all coaches want to talk about improvement. Obviously, they're right. seeing some improvement. Well, and on the Greenwood front there, though, you know, they had the third string quarterback playing most of the game. And, you know, we, our, our guy Braden Davis for Greenwood had a yep. big night and really put the Bulldogs on his back. And that Greenwood defense, as we said, had not been, you know, really run on like that yet so far. But, um, you know, overall, you know, they still won 55 to 14. So that it's, yeah, a, how know, many teams with the third string quarterback can put up 55 points? Uh, that shows you uh, Greenwood's uh, football fed. They're a powerhouse down there, but they play in a powerhouse conference as well, so that'd be interesting. Uh, over in Greenbrier, Van Buren uh, gave up quite a bit of points. It's kind of surprising. Yeah, that, that was a little surprising. Uh, not, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know quite what to make of that one. Uh, I just know that uh, I'm sure Van Buren is uh, anxious to get back on you know, the, the stick this week and get back at it after a disappointing loss to Greenbrier. Our guy Harold McIlvain was in Mountainburg and saw a real crazy wacky. He called it wacky in his in his story. Um, but uh, Yellville Summit with a 36-35 victory over Mountainburg. And, um, you know, and then we had Leland. You know, you took your, your first trip to uh, for a Waldron football game in a while. Tell us a little bit about that one. First trip to Scott County in 20 years since Sean Kearney was the uh, star running back for the Bulldogs. Uh, made the Associated Press super team that year uh, for the Bulldogs. In fact, I went down that year and covered them a couple of times, and they lost to Pulaski Academy in the uh, in the playoffs. But it's a great trip to, uh, to Scott County. The press box at that time, it was at a different stadium, obviously. This one's about 10 or 12 years old. That press box was about one tenth the size of the one now. Very nice, very spacious. Me and Caleb Greiger had plenty of room, plenty of room in the press box, and uh, he got some great shots. And we watched the Battle of Scott County. Mansfield won forty-eight to six, but it was a much closer game today. It was only seven to nothing right before the half, and Cole Kendall threw a thirteen-yard scoring pass to Peyton Martin to make it 14 to nothing. Mm -hmm. And then they Mansfield got the second half kickoff and scored on a 47 yard run. And then Waldron scored uh, to make it 21 to six. And then Waldron or Mansfield scored three defensive touchdowns within a span of five minutes, two fumble recoveries and an interception return for a touchdown, three defensive scores within a matter of five minutes and turned it into a 48 to six win. All right. Well, um, I know the the folks at Waldron were probably happy to see you, and um, you know, it's, yeah, it's, Leland it's, Barkley showing up. Man, I mean, great, uh, a free meal. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I got bar. I got barbecue and chocolate cake. Oh man! Oh, wow. So it doesn't get much better. Than no, that. it doesn't. All right, guys. Well, let's move into the the this week's slate of games, and um, <clears throat> you know, the seven A West. There are. Uh, well, then there's there's four really big games. There. They're all they're all important at this point, and I, I'm gonna make the argument they're all important anyway. But these are really important games. We're gonna start off Leland Rogers at Fort Smith Southside. We've been talking about it. We've been discussing it. We've been analyzing it, and it's gonna happen this week. You know, we're gonna see how good that Southside team really is. They've looked good so far, but here come the Mounties. And, you know, Here come the Mounties. You know, they have uh, mercy rules south side each of the last two seasons. So how much ground can a team make up in one year from being mercy ruled the last two times? Because these seniors for south side, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they've seen that scoreboard, that clock start running both times that they've played Rogers. So how much, how much difference, how much ground can they make up against a team uh, like that? 
Uh, now, the thing that you kind of look at, if you look at the strength of schedule for both of these teams, I don't think either one of these teams uh, really would have an advantage in, in that regard. So it's even hard to look at the opponents and size this one up. Obviously, um, both teams can run it and pass it. Southside runs it uh, probably, uh, well, they do run it a lot more than they pass it. But I think with Jacob Jenkins and then, uh, of course, you know, Dane Williams at Rogers, it gives them, you know, they can do either. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a very interesting game. You know, I, I talked to Coach Harbison on Monday, and um, we talked about how do you slow down the south side offense and, and how do you uh, deal with that big offensive line they've got. And, you know, he, I think he's they're, they're trying to figure that out right now. Um, and for sure, you know, uh, Rodgers is going to have to score points. They can't really be sloppy like they were a couple weeks ago against Farmington. But, you know, everything kind of points to kind of an offensive shootout here with Southside and 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 the Mounties. And um, and then the, the, the point I made to Coach Harbison was, you know, Southside has boasted about their improved defense, and we talked about it in the preseason. And so that will be a real test for the, for the Mavericks is can they slow down Rodgers? And, you know, so there, there's a lot of just kind of subplots going through all this, Rick. And, you know, I'm not going to let you go to Southside. You know, we're going to send you somewhere else this week. But I know this is a game that you would like to be at for sure. And what I'm uh, leading knows a lot more about this. I, I didn't know that Southside was going to uh, be this good. Leland pays a lot more attention to it than I do. But, man, the Mavs and Mounties, I mean, how to kick off the – uh, first week of the regular season, I didn't expect that would be our primetime game, but it definitely is. And, uh, uh, yeah, Leland, I know you have a great time down there watching that one. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. It's um, And you talk about the defensive. You know, so many times in an offensive shootout or a game that we think is going to be a big scoring game, there's there just seems to be at some point one team or the other will make a defensive play that changes the course of the game and even decides the course of the game. And that's that may very well be the case again. All right. So another big one uh, will be Fayetteville at Bentonville West. And, um, you know, Fayetteville's 3-0. and Didn't play last week. Bentonville West is 2-1 and with a – their only loss was a really against, – against Cabot who, you know, they played at Cabot in that loss. And I think Cabot was a lot better – in that game than they were when they came up here in week one in Fayetteville and just a weird situation, you know, just a, you know, the hot weather, the late start, all that, I think may have just kind of affected Cabot that night. So uh, anyway, back to this Fayetteville at Bentonville West game, you know, Fayetteville's three, you know, Bentonville West is uh, they, they've, they've had their moments already this year. And, um, you know, we'll have Henry Apple out there at that one this, this week. And, uh, Expect you know kind of another high-scoring kind of ball game with some with some good offenses. Uh, Fayetteville Bulldogs, led by uh, Drake Lindsey and and Bentonville West with with Brian with uh, Brian Pratt and, and his staff there. Uh, just all, everything points to another really good ball game out in Centerton. Now uh, West is coming in. They really got a, a win under their belt. They needed a conference uh, booster, and they. Uh, uh, really shellacked uh, Little Rock Central. So they, they're coming in with a little confidence, mm -hmm. a little rebuilt confidence after losing mm -hmm. games early. And I did a little research, and in 2019, it might have been Casey Dick's first year, uh, Favor went up there, and, and West beat them by about two, three touchdowns. And that's a great atmosphere up there. I remember in the old days, uh, even they, before they built it, it was just a bunch of prairie dogs or gophers <laughs> or something out there. Now, that's a really nice facility out there. That's a great place to watch a ball game. The fans are going to be jacked up at West. And uh, uh, Fable, got to, they got to get up there and play ball. Like I said, we're going back to 0-0. Nobody cares about your 3-0 uh, record right now. So uh, uh, that's an excellent game. Another game is, you know, kind of the licking the wounds bowl right now is going to be Bentonville at Springdale Harbor. And, you know, both these teams could could really use a victory. And, uh, and it's, you know, with Bentonville being a, a preseason favorite in the conference, Springdale Harbor trying to rebuild under Coach Eckley, you know, you'd like to think that, you know, this is going to be all Bentonville. I don't think so. I think, I think Harper's going to put some points on the board. Well, the thing, the problem, uh, the challenge for Eckley is the challenge – 
Harbor's had the last few years. They just give up too many points. And you score as many points as they, they did even last week. Uh, you should win some of those games. So they're still trying to figure it out. I don't know if they're trying to get some better athletes on the defensive side. But uh, like Leland say, uh, even these high-scoring games, somebody's got to make a play somewhere. Otherwise, you're not going to – a defensive play. Otherwise, you're not right. going to win the game. Springdale is going to play at Rogers Heritage. And, you know, with six of the eight teams going to the playoffs in this league, I mean, you know, this is a this is a must win for both of those teams. Um, you know, and the the winner of that one will be in a, a nice position to, you know, maybe get in the playoffs or, or certainly be in the conversation. And the loser, I mean, it's a tough league, guys, and we all know that. Uh, in the 7 8 Central, uh, Bryant's coming down to play Fort Smith Northside. And that, you know, wow. no, we, we've talked about, you know, Northside's had struggles in, you know, it's not going to get any easier for him this week, Leland, with Bryant coming into town. No, especially a very mad Bryant right. yes. Hornets team. You know, they had a uh, they had a 24-game overall winning streak snapped and a 54-game winning streak against in-state opponents yes. snapped when they lost to Little Rock Parkview um, uh, two weeks ago. They were off last week two weeks ago, so that's uh, – you know that's they're not used to that, and uh, I've got a really good nugget about that loss too that'll be in the uh, in the capsule that we'll have on Thursday about that loss as well. But Northside also, I went by and talked to Felix Curry yesterday, and uh, they're dealing with a few things right now internally. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll see if they get that uh, you know straightened out. They lost to Fayetteville fifty six to nothing. Uh, two weeks ago, and that, of course, that was coming off a forty-nine and nothing loss to Greenwood. But uh, uh, the Grizzlies are uh, upbeat. Uh, they've had uh, you know good practices. They had a week off, and uh, they're uh, they're ready to play Bryant. In the in the six A West, uh, Greenwood's going to play at Van Buren, and um, you know all indications. You know you think Greenwood will will keep on rolling. However, <laughs> I mean you know. I don't believe Kane Archer is going to be back yet. I don't know what the other quarterback situation is going to be. So it's going to be a challenge for Greenwood at Van Buren. Yeah, um, you know, all three quarterbacks for Greenwood took snaps in yesterday's practice. Uh, Kane Archer missed uh, the Greenbrier game or the Salem Springs game. He had uh, he broke his wrist being tackled mm. in the second quarter against Greenbrier. It was his non on his non throwing hand. So at this point, it's just a matter of catching the snap and then protecting him, protecting that arm uh, during the course of the game. As far as throwing, doesn't affect him. Uh, it's going to be basically a game time decision as to whether they play him. He will be suited up on Friday night. Cooper Goodwin also the backup, who's a sophomore, who has really been the backup throughout all summer and spring and everything. He also practiced yesterday and is uh he will he will probably start Friday night. And then Scott Holland, the uh the third string quarterback who was kind of pressed in the service, he's available as well. You know, he threw three touchdown passes last week. He came in and was seven of twelve for seventy nine yards and good. threw three and threw three yeah. Yeah. three touchdown passes as the third string quarterback. Yeah. You know, the, the real big game in the 6A West this week, guys, you know, no doubt about it, Pulaski Academy at Little Rock Christian. You know, a lot of people around here will have their eyes on that one. Um, so we'll, we'll just see how that one goes. That's going to have a big effect on, on how that conference turns out. You know, last year was a perfect triangle. Every, you know, the top three teams, they all beat each other. And then PA beat Greenwood in the finals. Um, so, uh I mean, I'll certainly have my eyes on that one, and Leland, I know you will too. Um, we move into the 5A West, and we've got some big games here. Harrison at Farmington is a big one. Um, and the Goblins are going to roll. Both teams are going to – well, sorry, Harrison's 2-1. and one. Farmington is going to be 1-2, uh, and two, I believe. Do I have that? Yeah, they, yeah. They've, they've lost twice. They lost to Rogers mm -hmm. in Springdale. Yep. Uh, P Ridge at Prairie Grove, Rick. I know you're looking forward to that one. Yeah. You got an undefeated P Ridge Blackhawks squad coming in to to take on a Tigers team that got uh, beat by a Tulsa Private School last week. 
Yeah, I don't hold that against you. know, those private schools, Tulsa area schools are really good anyhow. And then you got one of them private schools over there. And um, so I don't take anything much away from that loss. Pretty, pretty gross solid. Danny Absher's going to have them fired up. That's a great atmosphere over there. Small town football. There's going to be some head knocking over there. Really impressed what uh, Bray Cook has done with P. Ridge over there. Uh, I saw them in the pre- I, I mentioned before, I saw them in preseason scrimmage. Did not look good at all. But that's what coaches do. They probably move some kids around. They got their confidence back back up again. And now the uh, 5A West Conference opener, uh, the Blackhawks are going to be ready over there Friday night at Prairie Grove. Looking forward to it. All right. And, you know, there's a whole host of games, you know, in the, in the smaller uh, conferences. Um, you know, Elkins is going to play at Gravit and kind of the highlight the, the 4A1. Uh, you know, in, in the 3A1, uh, there, there's just a lot. You know, Hackett's at Boonville, West Forks at Man, Mansfield, Cedarville, Lavaca, Greenland at Charleston. Um, you know, so it, it, it's going to be a full Friday night schedule, Leland. And, uh, you know, but again, everything kind of points back to what's happening down in Fort Smith and over in Centerton. And um, we'll know, you know, and, and with every week, we'll know a little bit more about how this thing's going to shape out. You know, it's, you talked about the 5A West. I don't think there's a favorite in the 5A West at this point. Um, I think Shiloh Christian um may have been early but the fact that they lost their starting quarterback that they kind of banked on throughout i guess the backup kind of uh you know he moved to gentry so uh, i know bo williams has had three great games or i guess two great games and then uh, um it was a victory christian kind of held him down a little bit last week but they're gonna have to have a passing game to go along with him especially since they count on him so much defensively so I don't think there's a I don't think there's a favorite in the 5A West. So that conference is really going to be fun to watch every single week because there's going to be a game or two that will end up having um, you know an impact on the playoffs at some point during the season. And don't count the Airedales out. You know um, I talked a little bit about Northside going through a few things. I think Alma went through a few things, too, and made some adjustments after that loss to Van Buren. And, you know, they've had two very good games since then. Uh, they they open up, up at Clarksville, and then they welcome Farmington, the to town. So don't count the Airedales out yet either, but that's going to be a really fun conference to watch all season long. Man, it's, it's exciting. I'm, I'm excited, guys. All right, so we're going to take a little break, and then when we come back, we will – do our top five of the week. If you're enjoying this podcast, consider a newspaper subscription to the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette or the River Valley Democrat Gazette. We have a special offer for our podcast listeners, so visit nwaonline.com slash podcast23 to get started. You can also click the subscribe button on our websites, nwaonline.com and rivervalleydemocratgazette.com, or call us at 479-684-5509 and be sure to say that you're a podcast listener. Now back to the show. We're back on the Prep Rally Podcast. Graham Thomas here at Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Rick Fires joining me in studio. Leland Barclays in the River Valley. And gentlemen, let's move right into our top five from this past week. Rick Fires, take it away. All right. Uh, the, big, the big thing is uh, start a conference play. To me, can Bentonville bounce back after consecutive home losses? So, uh, you know, they got a lot, a little bit to prove there. Another thing is the Rogers Southside. Uh, I knew Rogers was going to be good. I didn't know Southside was going to be this good right here. You know, uh, they haven't been, but Kim Dameron really got that team rolling. That's a huge game down there. Yeah, the Bentonville a lot. You know, Kansas City Rocker. Don't ever forget they are an elite program, one of the most respected here in through not only this area throughout the region, maybe the whole country. Excellent uh, private school up there academically. Uh, then to, uh, Conway, everybody, I'm still, every time I look at our score, then I look at Conway. Uh, they brought some state pride. They won at Monroe, uh, Washita Christian. They play good uh, football down there in Louisiana. And they open up as, against uh, Little Rock. 
Southwest. They're going to win that game. Then they got Cabot, October. But the one we're all going to be waiting for, November 6th, may be the biggest game of the year when Bryant and Cat and uh, and Conway play. I'm looking forward to Benton, uh, Fayetteville at Bentonville West. 2019, Fayetteville went up there and got beat 35-17. to 17. So I think uh, Bentonville West is kind of sneaky good, and they crushed Little Rock Central, which gives them some momentum. Uh, let's go back to tennis. Uh, Roger, Bentonville girls defending state champion, yet Rogers girls beat them 5-4 in a match up there uh, Monday at the Mounties um, uh, tennis courts. Bentonville boys won there. So all this is leading up to the uh, conference tournament at Harbor, and then that's followed by the uh, state tennis tournament at Rogers Heritage, October 9th and 10th, and that's all I got. All right. We, Leland, we might end up having a little bit of uh, overlap here with mine and yours. Um, and that's just because we just didn't have a lot of football games last week. But So I'm going to start off uh, in, in my categories, the, the 6A and below, and um, – and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Ridge, Gordon, Swafford at P at, uh, sorry, not P Ridge, at Green Forest, excuse me. Three touchdowns and a 24-8 win over Cedarville. And here's the thing, guys. It's the first time Green Forest has won consecutive games since 2016. Wow. And it's the first time they've won back-to-back -back home games since 2013. So, <laughs> great the job. Ridge, all right. Great, uh, great job by, uh, yeah, Ridge, Gordon, Swafford. I uh, love that name. That's that, that was my favorite. I heard it at media day. I was like, that's a, just a great name. But great job by Coach Greg Tibbet. I believe they're hosting Lincoln this week, and um, that's a so game. yeah, that, that 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 will be a, a good one. I hope. Uh, I'm gonna go with Braden Davis at Greenwood. That maybe where we're gonna overlap a little bit, Leland. But you know, we he was our player, player of, the of the week for the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Two hundred. Uh, something rushing yard, 240 something rushing yards, four yeah. touchdowns. I mean, that's a good night in any league. All right. So, and uh, I'm going to break off of the football here, and I'm even going to jump up in the class. Well, it's 6A golf. It's 6A golf. Yep. Uh, how about the, the day that Springdale Harbor had yesterday? Uh, and, and they had the, the Mountie War Eagle Invitational out at Lost Springs Golf and Ath Athletic Club. Harbor had the two medalists in the boys and girls, uh, Logan yeah. Mayo was the, the top boy. Uh, and then Charlie Horton was the, the medalist in the girls' match. Uh, and so Coach Tim Rippey, known him a long time from when he was basketball coach at, at uh, Gentry in Salem Springs. He's the golf coach at Harbor now. Um, I tell you that, that you know, the, the, the Harbor boys end up winning that tournament. And so what you got now in the, in the, the 6A boys' golf is you've got a lot of – it's wide open. I mean, I, I I have no idea which team. Fayetteville, Bentonville can win it. Rogers can win it. Harbor can win it. And there's teams down in the, in the Central that can win it. So that 6A boys golf is going to be good. And then we'll see the best of the 6A girls golf here next week at Springdale Country Club as <laughs> they're going to host that. Um, number four, uh, I'm going to go with uh, – I got to go to the Panther Cross Country Classic in Salem Springs and – um, Coach Sharon Jones told me that some people have said that that is the biggest cross-country meet in Arkansas, minus the chili pepper. So that, to me, is... is saying something. I mean, it's, it's a big meet. I've, I've gone to it every year for about 15 years now. So it's, it's, it's something. But how about this? Um, Tian Grant of Pea Ridge wins the overall meet. And then the second the, the second overall finisher was Nathan Hawbaker of Salem Springs, and he set the school 5K record. So a lot of good runners have come through there. So congratulations. This is a good, great area for cross-country, too, oh, yeah. around here. They got a lot yeah, of the yeah. Rogers program, a lot of good cross-country programs. Oh, yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, Salem Springs had a good one, and, uh, you know, it's good to see uh, – uh, kid from Pea Ridge doing well, and yep. our, our our guy Henry Apple's all over that cross country. So he'll he'll definitely, uh, and I'm sure, is keeping his eye on everything that's happening in that regard. And then uh, last week out at uh, the Highlands in, in Bella Vista, there was a I think it was about a seven or eight team uh, golf match. Uh, looked like it was the four A one teams or four A North or whatever they call it. 
But Tegan Muldoon of Gravit, I think Gravit's defending Gravit girls are defending state champs. Uh, she shot a 74 and won that, so I thought that was pretty good. Leland, you're up, man. Uh, Mansfield's defense was uh, very good in the 48-6 win over Waldron. They gave up 47 yards in the first half. Um, Dakota Deer had a sack on the second play of the game for Mansfield, had three more tackles for loss in the game. He's a uh, junior defensive tackle who kind of set the tone for the game. Of course, they had the three defensive returns for touchdowns. Um, Samuel Burton picked up a fumble, went 58 yards. Ethan Martin picked up a fumble, went 69 yards. And then Daniel Burton intercepted a pass and went 70 yards. So big defensive performance performance for Mansfield, uh, which will bode well for them in the 3A1. Uh, I don't know if they can challenge Charleston or Boonville, but it'd be interesting to see if they can. Uh, and then Greenwood's, of course, performance 55 to 14. Yeah, Brayden Davis had a big game, player of, the year, player of the week, three touchdowns rushing, one receiving. But I really think it was the play of Scott Holland, a third string guy, who has been playing a little bit of receiver. He switched his uniform number from 82 to 10, uh, 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 you know, unexpectedly to even play quarterback. So I think he practiced for four days leading up to the game. Could he have kept uh, his number at 82 if they if he had wanted to and have like a number 82 playing quarterback? Yeah, we've seen odd numbers like that before. That's but I guess, uh, you know, to make it nice and legal, uh, switched it to 10 and uh, – I think a outstanding performance for a third string guy with four practices under the belt because even back during the summer, everything was, you know, Cooper Goodwin and Kane Archer took all the snaps. So, um, you know, great performance for a third string quarterback. And then, of course, um, Lamar lost to Boxite on Friday night, 34 to 33 at Boxite. Uh, Lamar had a 27 to 13 lead going into the fourth quarter boxside scored uh, on the second play of the fourth quarter to make it 27 20 then they recovered an onside kick and uh marcus wimberly took a direct snap and went 47 yards for a touchdown to tie it up 27 27 lamar then put together a 16 play drive that took eight minutes and 57 seconds to take the lead back they went for two didn't make it Boxside scored with 148 left, Man. kicked the extra point, and went up 34-33. Lamar drove 70 yards in 10 plays and was at the one-yard line and was stopped short uh, by inches as time expired. And it looked like um, the call could have went either way. It could have been called a touchdown. Uh, it looked like the referees, when I watched it, it looked like the referees were all kind of looking at each other to see if one or the other was going to call touchdown. Nobody did. Game was over, and Lamar lost 34-33. Uh, then LaVaca uh, improved to 3-0, and I, I, I thought, wow, I wonder when the last time LaVaca started 3-0. Well, I forgot that they went. They started 6-0 and last year before injuries took over. Right. So they started 3-0. and Cutler winners with three more touchdown passes and two touchdown runs to keep them uh, undefeated with a big win over uh, Mount Ida. And then last, the Hackett Lady Hornets are still undefeated in volleyball, 14-0 and and undefeated in the conference, and they play uh, two matches this week. Wow. Man, we covered a lot of ground there, yeah, guys. We had a little down. volleyball, a little tennis, cross country, I mean, a little golf, and just a little bit of football, just a little bit. So, How about eSports? We got any esports? Oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's man. I you know I'm I'm all for for it, but um, anything get kids off the couch. But now I'm not looking forward to covering an esport tournament or a match either way. All right, well, guys, we have had it. We've got a really busy week this week and a great slate of games on Friday night. And folks, you can listen to the Prep Rally podcast at NWA Online or watch it on YouTube or really get it anywhere you get your podcast. Thanks again to our sponsor, West Termite Pest and Lawn. And for Rick Fires in Northwest Arkansas, for, for Leland Barclay in the River Valley, I'm Graham Thomas signing off, and we'll see you next week.